a two degree Celsius world um, is a place where, according to the current, uh, well, our current knowledge and the pathways we're following, is a place that we may reach by 2050. So in, in, in 30, perhaps even earlier, but in 30 years time, roughly. So it's very close. I mean, it's just, just you know, when our kids grow up, we would be in a two degree Celsius world. From the knowledge we have today, that would be a world where the, the, the frequency of extreme events will increase dramatically. So you'll have more, you know, human threatening extreme events such as, you know, devastating droughts, undermining food security in large parts of African semi-arid regions. So you'll have more uh, of these, these crises occurring uh, more frequent heat waves hitting everywhere in the world. So extreme events will increase. But perhaps most importantly, um, the, 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 the assessment today shows that if we pass two degrees, if we, if we reach or slightly pass two degrees, we risk crossing tipping points, committing ourselves to, to irreversible sea level rise, which goes beyond the one meter that the IPCC has predicted for this century. We could then not exclude, you know, being between one and two meters this century and even committing all future generations to several meters sea level rise because Greenland might destabilize at two degrees Celsius. So might parts of West Antarctic ice shelf. So two degrees is a point where we quite frankly don't know exactly what may happen. The same with permafrost thawing. We start seeing already now at 1.2 degrees Celsius warming signs of, of worrying increase in, in methane and carbon release from, from permafrost thawing in Siberia and in the Arctic. But passing two degrees, we, are have, we would have a higher risk of permanently starting to lose even more. So in short, we come to two degrees we cannot exclude that that might bump up the temperature even further just because we trigger more forest fires, we trigger more permafrost thawing, we trigger rapid ice melt which makes the planet darker and the darker the planet gets the more heat it absorbs. These are the self-reinforcing feedbacks that can make passing two degrees very dangerous. If we then come to three degrees or even beyond three degrees I call that very simple, just a catastrophe point. And, and, and in a way, it's almost worth ending there because asking what the implications are is very difficult to answer because we've never been there. Last time the planet was there is five million years ago. Over the past three million years, which is the Pleistocene geological epoch, when the planet has looked roughly as today with the continental configuration and the atmospheric chemical composition roughly as today, we have, according to the latest science, never passed two degrees. So despite all the volcanic eruptions and earthquakes and, and orbital forcings we've gone in and out of ice ages over the last million years, still we have stayed within this very narrow band. Plus two, the warmest we get, minus four to six, deep ice age. So, you know, you go to three to four, you're actually pushing ourselves back five, ten million years. You're basically pushing the planet back to, uh, to a, a, a hothouse Earth, a, a dinosaur hosting planet, which uh, does not have any permanent ice sheets, potentially a sliver remaining in Antarctica. You would have uh, at least 10, but more than 20 meters sea level rise. You would have... Uh, probably three billion people uh, who currently would be living in areas that are physically no longer possible to host human beings because uh, you would simply not be able to cope because of the levels of temperature. So you would have populations concentrating in, in the Arctic and Antarctica, so you would get huge population movements. Uh, it's very questionable how we could feed humanity because we would lose so much our cultural land. We would end up in a situation where we simply have a, a planet no longer in a, in a state that would be really you know, adapted to, to support humanity. And on top of all this, we might have surprise. We might have unexpected surprises. We don't know how long time the ocean can cope with just absorbing carbon dioxide and heat. Today, the oceans take up 95% of the heat caused by our fossil fuel burning. 
We don't know how long time that will be possible to continue. We don't know really what happens if we start losing the, the rainforest or even destabilizing the temperate forest because these are massive carbon sinks. Soils in themselves hold, you know, 500 billion tons of carbon, which is, you know, equivalent of, you know, more than a third of all the emissions that we would be causing ourselves if we would take us to three degrees. So, you know, these are big, powerful forces in nature that uh, we don't know entirely what would happen if we would go so far out. So, so staying away from, from even two, I would argue, has very strong scientific support today.